Welcome to the Chef of X podcast. Right, you're trying to get into that's, linguistics? <laughs> no, that's like a part of my major. What is your major besides African American studies? <laughs> I hate you so much. You're black, right? <laughs> but it's cognitive science. So it's uh, like an yeah. interdisciplinary of like linguistics, neuroscience, computer science, psychology is like different, you know, fields wow. that I'm studying. So that's probably the field right there. Mm hmm. You can do so much with that major, so mm. that's why I changed to that. From what? Computer science. Oh, really? Yeah. You came in as computer science? Mm -hmm. The fuck? <laughs> the fuck? Yeah, I did that for like two years, and I was like, ooh. Uh, wait, what? Did, what was the last thing you did? Like, was it all GE, like, or were you taking some hardcore computer science classes when you stopped? Um. It's not that like okay I I was taking ECS thirty, so we were What's learning. I don't know the numbers. Okay, so <sighs> that's like C plus plus and Linux okay. and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. So yeah, like I've been doing coding since like high school and not, but you know after taking that class I was kind of like really introspecting. I was like, do I really want to do this for the rest of my life? Just <laughs> you know at a desk and just cold, you know, like have this routine life. I mean, it doesn't have to be that way, but I just see myself just going into the office. I mean, it depends because like if you think of Google, you're just kind of like, oh, because it's like this nice little playhouse. You know, yeah. they have like bean chairs and all yeah, that bean that's bags the ad. That. But that's that's only certain <laughs> top companies. There's also companies that have nothing to do with computer science. Mm -hmm. We're just shuttled in a corner, mm -hmm. and it's like they don't really respect the discipline. Yeah, I see Google as the place where they want computer scientists or STEM people in general to be creative. Mm -hmm. But I don't think that's the norm. I don't know that everybody wants STEM people to be creative. I feel like they just want them to get the job done mm -hmm. and then shut the fuck up and right, get out of the right, way. Right, right. So it's like... I agree, I agree. You don't need a slide for that. You know, you don't need a playground for that. <laughs> you just say, this is what it is, all right? Right. And live with it. Exactly. That's why I was like, you know what? Safe for me. So I was like, I'll stick with CogSci. But still, why the the leap to CogSci, especially since you've been programming for a while? Yeah. How did you arrive at that point? Um, I mean, since I've already, you know, taken, like, uh, computer science classes, I was like, okay, well, these credits got to go towards something, <laughs> you know? And then I was like, you know, I have, a lot, like, a lot of interests, and psychology is, like, one of them. Like, when I was in high school, I was like, you know, CogSci sounds interesting, but at the time, they didn't have it, like, here at Davis. Oh, wow. You know? So... Yeah. Wow. You know. How new is that major? I think it's like third official. year. Honest, I think yeah, probably. Wow. Like three years now. Yeah. So. Yeah, I know a surprising amount of people who are interested in coxide. Not mm -hmm. all of them are at Davis, but I, I, I do think that the brain is a, um, it's kind of a, a challenge of our generation, mm -hmm. in the way that like at one point classical physics was the challenge and. And the quantum mechanics. Uh, I mean, there are a lot of challenges, but it's so crazy that we don't really know much about the brain. And it appears to be very similar to a computer. Mm -hmm. So given all the advances in computing, hopefully some of them are useful in figuring out, you know, how the fuck the brain works. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. I never would have guessed. So I personally like STEM too. Mm -hmm. um, my old experience is in uh, electrical engineering. And uh, however, over the last couple of years, I've been doing more of like a creative expression type of thing as my main thing. <laughs> and um, I wanted to ask you about um, whether or not you saw any connections between the one creative thing I know you do, dance, mm -hmm. and um, maybe your background in computer science or what you're learning in cognitive science. Um, do you see that there are like connections in your experience in dancing or maybe just the structure of dancing that kind of reflect some of the concepts from these other worlds of STEM? Mm. Um, I mean, as far as like dancing, for me, a lot of people, like, okay, for me, I use dance as a way to kind of like release like my stress and everything like gets me pumped up you know it makes me really confident you know yeah so i feel like you know right now that i'm learning about like different emotions and stuff like that and how like some things are innate and stuff so um just me 
like really introspecting i think that's the part where i'm seeing like a connection where like certain thoughts and stuff can kind of like prevent you like just from making certain decisions so for instance like me coming up with choreo i'm just like oh i'm not going to do this because i think other people might feel like you know it's i know it's not like a like a good move or it's like something that doesn't really represent the group so it's like why am i having these thoughts and i'm like kind of connecting it to like like um I don't know, like societal pressures, like why, um, I don't know. I just feel like, I don't even know where I'm going with this, but I just feel like as far as like psychology, like being surrounded by like, now it's like 21 girls in the group now mm -hmm. and just observing all their behaviors and different attitudes and stuff like that. I think that really, you know, <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's when it comes like in handy. Cause like I see myself as like, when I go to dance, like I'm really reserved and I really like to like observe people like, yeah. you know, in moments where they don't feel like people aren't watching them in a sense, you know? So I'm like, okay, like this girl named Brianna, whatever, I know she's really timid. And then when we start doing dance, I see like she gets really nervous and she starts hyperventilating and she has to like leave the room or just like different things like that. I'm just wondering why that may be. So sometimes I like go beyond, you know, myself and kind of like, I don't know, I feel like, <laughs> I'm like the psychologist. Yeah. Because I, I pull people. I like I notice things. I'm like, oh, you don't seem like you're OK. Like you want to talk outside. And I just noticed like this girl, like she's super energetic and whatnot. And, you know, she had full of energy, but I feel like she wasn't herself. You know, something that I would like I was seeing something different. So like, yeah. I pulled her outside. I was like, you know, are you good? And then she just broke out into tears. And she was just like, you know, like. I'm getting kicked out of my house. Like, mind you, she's like a first year. So she's like stressing out and everything. And she's just telling me about, you know, um, how that's making her so stressful. Like she doesn't know where to live and how the person she's living with has a disability and they're kind of like using it against her and all these other things. And I'm just like, wow, like everyone is like dancing around and all that, but no one noticed like there's something wrong with this person. You know what I mean? Yeah. So when I went outside, you know, everyone started coming out like, is she okay, da da da, you know? But I don't know. I think a lot of people lack awareness, too. Yeah. You know, so I don't know. Just the brain in general and just emotions and everything really interests me. So that's why I'm just kind of like I want to learn more about, like, the brain functions and stuff like that because I want to become, like, a clinical psychologist. Like, that's my, my goal, I guess, in a sense. Like, I want to be able to sit down and have conversations with, like, not only people in general, but like people within our culture, like because I feel like there's you mean like black, a, people? black people, <laughs> black people, black <laughs> people, or, or Afro Germans, or which, which diaspora are you talking about? I'm just trying to, you know, get rid of that stigma because I don't know. Like growing up with, you know, my parents they weren't really as nurturing, and yeah. they really they weren't really open with like sharing their feelings or allowing me, you know, to express myself. It's kind of like, oh, stay in, like, a child's place or, like, right. don't disrespect me and, you know, st just stuff like that. And I feel like it's really triggering, you know. And, yeah, like, I feel like that can kind of, like, transfer into your adulthood. And there's certain behaviors that you have where you're just like, oh, I don't know why, like, in certain situations, like, I don't really talk as much. It's because, oh, because it kind of reminds me of, like, my parents and, like, different things that happened in my, you know, when I was younger. You know, right. like a lot of things have like, it stems from, you know, different experiences and stuff like that. So I don't know. Yeah. What's uh, what's interesting, too, to me is I, I feel like um, now I was never a professional dancer. All right. But I did. You know, I was in the jerking movement. So that counts. <laughs> but when I when I do feel like I'm having these deep moments of expression, there's a therapeutic value to it. You know, so it's not only that you can read. um the way other people feel based off of whether or not they're expressing themselves to the fullest or they're shying away. Mm. Maybe they have some things going on in the background and you can see that through the way that they're dancing. But there's also the fact that like dancing might be the emotional solution to a lot of those problems mm. too. And expressing expression in general right. can be um, not just revealing, but therapeutic. It can actually start to solve some of those problems. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it's interesting to think like certain movements are kind of correlated with certain emotions. And th this, t 
to me seems to be the job of a, a choreographer, like you were saying, you know, if if the vibe isn't right or whatever yeah, in the yeah, crew, yeah. then you feel like it's not going to come across correctly, or maybe that's how I'm interpreting it. Mm-hmm. But um, that to me seems a little bit like a STEM concept mm. that, hey, do th- this input gets you this output. Right. Or these rough themes will get you, these movements will represent these themes. Mm-hmm. And it's not always cut and dry, right. but there are certain things that are like, yo, that's an aggressive movement. Mm. Oh, that's like a sexual movement. Oh, that's like calming and peaceful and nurturing. Right. So it seems like it could have been any way. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, aggressive, maybe not. Like, maybe that comes from <laughs> fighting motions, right? But, like, um, it seems like you could take certain movements that we maybe in the United States or whatever, in Davis, consider to mean this emotion, and then you take it somewhere else and it means something completely different, mm. you know? Um, but then also, you get things like tribal dances where things translate, no problem. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't really matter where you are. People seem to understand roughly what's going on. Is this a celebration? Are people mourning, et cetera? So I I feel like that's a STEM side that I see as a jerker, Mm, you know, in dancing. (laughs) (laughs) But, but, uh, but, you know, it's not very cognitive science uh, um, informed. Mm -hmm. It's just, you know, I see certain things. I notice certain things, mm-hmm. you know. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, speaking of seeds, because I'm curious now. Seeds? Yeah. How are we speaking of seeds? <laughs> <laughs> well, Anyhow, you planting seeds and women, multiple women. Okay, all right, let's but, get into it. Yeah. Sure. Do you want kids? Only 96 kids. 96. Minus 97. So if I could have negative one kid, I feel like I'd be pretty happy there. But anything more, that's dangerous. Zero, now that's pushing. <laughs> yeah. I mean, definitely not in the short term, no. <laughs> I got to figure, figure out what my life is about. <laughs> Before I, like, you know, end up having some kid make the decision for me. Mm. Okay, but in the future, though. I'm not saying now. But in the future, do you see yourself? Listen, I feel like I could have kids, okay? I, I, honestly, I feel like it's likely. But right now, while I don't, mm. I don't want them. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's understandable. I mean, I'm not trying to <laughs> encourage you to have children now, but I'm just seeing. <laughs> well, I mean, kids, there was some study that I don't know if it's credible, but Let's hear it. it said that. Basically, you're miserable once you have kids. Mm. You just don't want to admit it. Mm. You just want to lie to everyone else. All the smiles, (laughs) they're false. (laughs) (laughs) And I think there's, I feel like there's some truth to that. Mm -hmm. Without any evidence to support it, I support it, basically. Mm -hmm. And that's where I stand, you know. But, you know, I'll... I'll be a teacher or something. I'll help somebody's... uh, So help somebody else's kid. Mm -hmm. Uh... Yeah, but I, I, I have a so I have a interesting kind of level of healing I have to do with respect to kids because when I was a kid I was in a kind of weird situation mm. where I uh, at some point in time I from a you know from birth I was with my mommy and daddy. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> I cannot take you serious. Right and now. then something happened. All right, and then I wasn't with my mommy and daddy. And I was with my aunt and my uncle, who were, to put it lightly, slightly more harsh, slightly (laughs) less loving, right? Um, We made jokes about, have you seen Matilda? Mm -hmm. We made jokes that my aunt was the trench bowl when we were kids. Oh, my gosh. (laughs) We just get locked in the the chokey for no reason. That's the way we really felt, though. It wasn't a joke back then. I guess it's only a joke looking back. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't really all that warm of an environment. However, I had other things in my world that uh, I felt like, you know, gave me love and care. Mm. Like uh, teachers, certain family members, whatever. So that even if I felt like a piece of shit, there were like enough positive influences that Mm. were like, hey, keep your head up, kid. 
do your thing. One day you'll be uh, in the yurt doing whatever. So, so anyhow, I, I feel like, and also I just, because of my aunt and uncle, this was one of the positives, but I, I got like a really good elementary school education. Mm -hmm. So I also felt like I was never one of the people who uh, was left out of the education system. Mm. And through that, I felt like that was my route to independence. It's like, I want to get the fuck out of here. All I got to do is get these good grades and then I'm ghost, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> and I pretty much ran that program. Mm -hmm. um, but then, uh, so a number of things have happened since I left for college. But I think the most relevant things in me thinking about uh, children involve me dealing with whatever amount of pain that I haven't dealt with from when I was a kid. Mm. And I don't really have that as the biggest priority simply because some combination of like the day to day life and like, I don't feel like that's my biggest trauma to deal with. Mm. So, or it hasn't been, it, it may turn out that like, a couple of quarters, you know, into Davis, shit starts going good, that I'll feel like that's the main thing I have to deal with. But as of right now, I feel like, dude, there's hell of shit I got to deal with. That's like, it's not really that big of a, it's not really that big of an issue. So that it may turn out, and I think it's probably likely, that uh, my view toward having children is not really... Like, I don't really have full access to it mm. because I'm dealing with, like, a tainted view, I, I feel. Mm. But in order to clear up the glass, <laughs> so to speak, um, I need to do a lot of work that just hasn't been a priority. So I'm, ju I'm still sticking with the default. Fuck kids. <laughs> <laughs> basically that's my current position and i'm not saying like i said i'm not sticking to the position it's just that's the honest reflection of, of where i am right now yeah. that being said how do you feel about kids having your own younglings soon gee i want to have my little mini me's of course honestly like growing up i didn't want kids at mm. all like why do you think that is i don't know just Dealing with the responsibility of, uh, you know, taking care of, like, a smaller human being and stuff. I feel like that was really stressful. I mean, yeah. even though I was younger, I'm just like, you know, imagine me just giving all, of, you know, the way how I'm acting towards my mom. Like, if my kid were to act like that, you know, yeah. so. Well, the cycle continues. <laughs> Your kids are always worse than you were. Remember that. <laughs> oh, my gosh. But, yeah, so I was like, ooh, like. Imagine just having a mini me like at that time, cause, oh, yeah, my mouth was something growing up. <laughs> I had a really bad mouth. Yeah, but that's I think that parents are aware of these stages, mm -hmm. and I think there's a bittersweet element to it mm -hmm. that you know. But I don't know. <laughs> like what I'm saying is, as bad as it is, as bad as you imagine it to be. Mm -hmm. The positives maybe um, oh, outweigh I, the negatives, even in the worst moments. Mm -hmm. That's true. I mean, for me, I don't, I mean, I feel like it was bad for her, but that was just a way of me kind of like expressing, you know, trying to get my point across because I feel like I wasn't being heard, you know? Yeah. So the only way I could have been, you know, if I, um, let's say, raise my voice or something like that, which is yeah. like the worst thing ever, but like, um, just certain things well, like that. Well, it's not the worst thing ever. I mean. <laughs> I know a guy who pulled a knife out, knife out on oh his dad. Oh, my god! And spent a month in county for it. Yikes. <laughs> but it was Ooh. a different situation. Oh, gosh. <laughs> I'm just, like, pitching that. Like, <laughs> but anyway, but, yeah, like, growing up, I didn't want kids at all. Until, like, when I came to college, I don't know, just seeing the lack of children. <laughs> just, like, little human beings walking around and, you know, I don't know. I just... Wait, seeing the lack of children or seeing a lot of children? Lack. Yeah. You know. Well, yeah, that's the thing is in college, everybody's the same age, roughly. Right, You're right. You're getting this weird experience of right, life. Right, right. So I kind of like, I don't know, it made me a little more open-minded to the idea, if that makes sense. Yeah. So I was kind of like, okay, well, um, 
maybe it might not be the worst thing, especially like if you're with someone who you really care about and stuff like yeah. that. Like that's usually, I guess, like the next step or whatever. Just something, not the <laughs> next step, but just like <laughs> something you would want to have with your partner. You know what I mean? Just like, like yeah. carry on like your legacy and stuff like that. Like I wouldn't just want it to just be us and that's it. Like, mm. so I don't know. Just to me, like at that moment, I was really deciding, you know, what's important to me and then. I was like, you know what? You know, kids, I'm for it. Wow, okay. Yeah, not anytime soon. Not anytime so soon. So next week or so, two weeks from now? Not anytime soon. <laughs> I'm I'm chilling. I'm chilling. But, yeah, that's what I hope to have in the future. What do you think about in vitro fertilization? What is that? How about designer babies? Designer babies? <laughs> yeah, how about that? Let's skip to that. Okay, you want to have kids. Great. You go to the place. <laughs> they say you give, you know, the sperm, the eggs, oh. and say, hey, cook up whatever the best meal you can with these ingredients. And then you have a black doctor. All right. I know this is one of your concerns. Stop. And then they say, uh, all right, we pick the, the best. <laughs> we, we'll, we'll present you with some options. They can be um, anywhere from 6'4 to uh, five. Seven. Which one? Uh, where do you want them? And you say, you know, this height. <laughs> and you say, all right, based on the, this profile, they could be, you know, these are the range of eye colors we can whip up for them. <laughs> Which one would you want? No, is, this exercise can go on and on and on. But are you, do you feel like this would be a positive experience for you? Um, you could tell the kid, you can just leave it out. How would you feel about that? Because I think this might be a reality fairly soon. You think so? Yeah. Oh. At least for rich people. Let's be honest. I, I it's already a quasi-reality for sexy people. <laughs> you just choose who you fuck. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I don't know. I'm low-key biased. I mean, not biased, but, like, to me, all that sounds really ridiculous. The fact yeah. that you... Ugh, it's like... I'm thinking of like build a bear, like yeah. build a baby, but like the fact that you would like the baby is not even born yet, but you already have this idea of what they what you want them to look like. Yeah, you know, and I'm just like, I don't know, like, I don't like what's the love in that? Yeah, you know, like yeah. I feel like the best way to do it, is, you know, <laughs> just just the cave method. Yes. <laughs> I, I don't know like that's that's so weird to me I'm just really processing that like why I mean I, I'm not gonna say why I understand why some people would do that because I know like in this you know in our generation a lot of people you know for instance what you said about like people being this tall or not a lot of people yeah. are just like oh like I'm only gonna talk to him because or I like him because he's that tall or whatnot I'm just like really people are saying I'm just kidding this has been say, the case like, where have you been this has been the case this, that's not been? even a generational thing and I just, I don't know, for me speaking, I think that's really superficial, but, yeah, you know, you just can't really help who you like or whatnot. But just for you to be like, oh, like, I wouldn't talk to him because he's short. I'm just like, who the fuck do you think you are? Like, what? Hey, I mean, he might rock your world. Oh, <laughs> everybody's got personal preference. I guess. <laughs> well, I guess. I, I've presented to you the, the kind of dark side, which is based in looks mm -hmm. and superficial things. Mm -hmm. But then there's the light side, which is that um, you have a certain genetic disease in your family, and it's possible mm. to rectify that in your child. And if we fix it in your child, every generation after your child will not have that same problem. Mm -hmm. then, then it becomes more of a medical thing, but it's still designer. Mm. So is that something that perhaps you'd be in favor of? Is preventing little Jimmy from uh, little Latron from? You know what I'm thinking about? Have you seen Creed too? I don't think so. Is it the boxing movie? Yeah. Maybe I have. I don't remember if it were one or two. Is it new? Yes. It the, just came is out. it? In, oh no, I haven't seen it. If it just came out, oh. the last movie I saw was that skater movie. What skater? <laughs> and movie? I went in there without my glasses. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh yeah, this is great. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, I forgot. It was a Jonah Hill movie. What was I going to say? Like, there's this 
Uh, I don't want to give you a spoiler. I mean, that's not really a spoiler. Ca- I don't care because... about spoilers. All right, oh, okay, ruin great, it, please. Great. I mean, I'd rather me, this than actually pay for the movie. Honestly, it's not a spoiler. But you already know. You've seen the first one at least. Yeah, I've seen the first one. If it has what's his name in it from Black Panther, then yeah, yes. Michael B. Jordan. Yeah, you know yeah. how his love interest was her name Tessa, T- Tessa, Tessa I don't Thompson, remember all that. Tessa Thompson. I think that's her name, and she has like, uh, I think she's like deaf mm. or whatnot. So she uses like. Uh, what do you call those things? Um, I know that echolocation is what bats use. Is it based on that? Let's just let's just okay. go with it. Whatever. Like I can't think of the name of it, but she uses that because eventually she'll be like officially like deaf or whatnot. She's slowly losing her hearing, basically. Okay. And um, you know they get pregnant and they have the baby, and then they're at the hospital, and they're like, okay, we're gonna run some hearing tests to see if like, you know, because it's um, hereditary. Mm. Or not. So she was like, okay, well, can we do tests or not? The dad, well, Michael B. Jordan is really like, okay, let's do this test, you know, da da. And then at the same time, you can see the look at her face. She's kind of like, you know, terrified, you know. Mm. So they run the test and they find out the baby can't hear at all. Yeah. You know, and then you could see their both reaction, like they're all like teary eyed and whatnot. But at the same time, like, I kind of got mad at his reaction towards it because he wasn't really comforting. Like, I feel like he lacked empathy in a yeah. sense. Because it's like, okay, like, if you truly, I don't know, if you truly love that person, I mean, there's ways to work around that. Like, you already took the initiative of learning, you know, how to um, how to learn, like, sign language. Yeah. So, like, what's what's the big deal? Really? Not, mm, yeah. You know? the, well, the assumption that it's sad to not be able to hear yeah. is already... Like, I get it. It's, like, something, like, terrifying to hear. But at the same time, it's, like... It's terrifying for someone who can hear, right? Mm-hmm. But it might not be terrifying for someone who's never been able to hear. Mm. I've heard arguments like this in favor of uh, the deaf community having pride behind having a unique human experience mm-hmm. that's not less than another experience. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But uh, yeah, and, uh, but it is, it does make sense given that the his significant other was losing their hearing mm-hmm. rather than them meeting. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, that is, that's, uh, I don't know, that's an interesting thing. And, and that's also, in general, I mean, that's the, uh, the possible tragedy in uh, having children mm-hmm. is that, yeah, what if you have a, a child who, for whatever reason, is different in one direction or yeah. another. Uh, how do you cope with that? For me, like, just responding, you know, like, I guess the reason why I'm kind of, like, saying, like, what's the big deal or not is because I'm thinking of my personal experience. Like, my da- my brother, he's autistic, but he's, yeah. high, like, high-functioning or whatnot. So, like, you know, just the way how my mom is with him and everything, you know, like, she jumped through, like, high ropes or whatnot just to get programs for him and, you know, get him really involved because she doesn't want him to be at home all day and be secluded to doing, like, one thing, like, make him, like, a sob story or whatnot. Like, yeah. you know, because my brother, like, he doesn't even want that for himself, too. He's just like, Mom, like, I want to go outside. Like, yeah. I want to do things that I'm passionate about. You know, he always um, verbalizes that. So for me, it's like, I don't know. There's always, it's, I don't know. It just, it makes me sad when people are like, oh, um, uh, like poor them yeah they're not the same as me right which is me because i am good <laughs> yeah i i think um the strength based approach rather than the weakness based approach is something that i i resonate super strong with it's like and i've been through both of them. i feel like i do all right in both situations but just generally speaking if i'm in a situation where um messing up costs me a lot and doing well doesn't reward me that much that's not a situation i want to be in even if i can perform i'd rather get the fuck out versus a situation where i'm allowed to make mistakes but getting it right gives me a reward and i i feel that the 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 idea behind like a disability and using that the term and and viewing things in a certain way is more of the first approach where it's like, okay, let's see all the boxes. Do you have this, this, this hearing, you know? Yeah. Okay. No, that means, you know, automatically you're below the people who have that. Well, it doesn't really add up because if that person has strengths in some area that everyone else doesn't, 
then you can just as easily say they're above everyone else. Mm. So uh, it does, it's not really beneficial for anyone because we pay the cost if we end up giving people more of a, of a crutch than they actually need. Plus the benefit of people doing what they really want to do and you know, uh, going out and improving society in whatever ways is in their strength is, is probably higher for you know for the people who who actually want to do those things than if you just got average people to do them mm-hmm. um i i went to community college in um cupertino it's like the headquarters of apple yeah. and, and one thing that they say about silicon valley is it's it's like really heavy with people who are on the autistic spectrum like in the work world and if you think about the the output of silicon valley as a whole mm-hmm. Um, the net, I mean, it really, everybody benefits, not just people who are on the autistic spectrum, but everyone benefits from things like Facebook or, uh, Tesla motors or whatever. I mean, there's the CEOs and there's the people in the limelight, but then there's everyone else who, you know, I'm sure, you know, people who are headed toward that lifestyle who are programmers or who are just getting the groundwork done to make some idea into an actual reality mm-hmm. by manipulating bits and whatnot, data, who gives a fuck? But yeah, <laughs> there's that reality too. And it's like, that only comes, in my view, the summary of it all is, that only comes from focusing on people's strengths. Mm-hmm. You don't get stuff like Silicon Valley. They literally in their offices say, like, do things that you would do if you weren't afraid to fail. Mm-hmm. So it, you, you have to have an environment Rather than labeling and saying this person's less than because they don't miss they missed out on this box, I think it's better to just create environments where people's strengths can really thrive. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I mean, shouts out to the chef set. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> chef set. Actually, you should do some some drops for me. Some, some drops. sound bites. <laughs> that would be amazing. Um, what do you think happens after we die? Hmm. Um, I don't know. I have so many theories on this. Okay. Give one, me the worst one. The worst one. <laughs> I don't know. This is all a simulation. It would just wake up or something. I don't know. But, that's that's um, not, in my view, that's not the worst one. <laughs> that's not the worst one? Nope. <laughs> Hmm. Well, anyway, um, like, I don't know. Like, growing up, my mom kind of, like, kind of, like, taught us, like, this idea. Like, in, in our culture, it's, like, like reincarnation. Yeah. So, when someone dies, like, for instance, like, my grandma died or whatnot, and, like, a moth came inside the house or whatnot, my mom was like, oh, that's your grandma. Like, don't kill it. You oh, know, just okay. It's here protecting you or whatnot. So... I don't know. I think that's a possibility. I don't know. Mm. I haven't really had like a set in stone way of like where I, you know, what I really believe happens in after like, well, well, after we die. But um, I mean, that's one of them. And then another one, I just feel like, mm, like maybe there is an afterlife. Maybe we kind of like get this second chance or we're starting over, but in a whole different body, you know. So mm. I guess kind of the same thing, but not like more so an animal. Maybe like, like for instance, you're no. you're black, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and then you die, and then you just wake up a white, <laughs> a, a white, white girl, a, a white, white girl. girl. You, I came up. You right? come back. Am I in America? <laughs> I'm on tenor. <laughs> I don't know. That's 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 a possibility, but. I don't know, me and my roommate were actually talking about that yesterday. Mm. About just like, I don't know, you've, I'm pretty sure you've seen The Matrix. Yeah. Yeah. So we're just like talking about that. Like, what if that's true or not? Because we're kind of relating it to like deja vu. Like, mm-hmm. have you have moments where you're just like, oh, like I've oh, done yeah. this before, you know? So you, I might have had more deja vu than anyone else you've spoken to. I'm going to throw that out while you mention it. So. Very much yes. <laughs> if 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 someone else that you've spoken to has had more deja vu than me, I feel bad for them. <laughs> Are you serious? Like how often? Like on average? On average, I used to have deja vu for months, for like hours of the day. 
So. Huh? Yeah, but I'm I'm a cognitive anomaly too. <laughs> uh, so I my my official. Are you serious? Yeah, I'm serious. My official um, diagnosis was bipolar, but my current psychiatrist doesn't think that's the case. But yeah, I'm like psychologically abnormal. <laughs> I'm so amazed right now, even though like. <laughs> but is it not obvious? I mean. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. Uh, but anyhow, yeah. What, what were you saying? Deja vu. <laughs> You're saying that that was tied into a theory. I don't about even. Death. I don't even know where I was going with this. I'm just like. No, you were talking about. You had several de- death theories. Mm-hmm. One of them was reincarnation. Yeah. And then the other one was a deja vu, matrix esque thing. Yeah. Yeah. So what was I going to say? I think. I'm trying to get back on track because at first I'm just amazed by what you're saying. But um, me and my roommate were kind of talking about like, what if, you know, like within this whole simulation, they're just like kind of like replaying these certain, you know, scenarios that's that's happening or whatnot. And I don't know. I don't know. I feel like maybe that might be a possibility because there's, I don't know if you heard, like, do you ever get, like, ringing noise? Like, someone's channeling? <laughs> no. I can honestly say no. <laughs> I don't know why. I just if, you, if you would have asked any question related to that, it would have been yes. But ringing? No. Like, I don't know. Like, there's some period of time of the day where I'm just, like, sitting there. And then, how can I? I don't know. just seemed like. Someone's channeling. Someone's trying to reach me from a different <laughs> Okay, so I'll say this. Someone channeling to me, yes. Mm-hmm. The ringing associated with the channeling? Mm-hmm. No. No. Mm. <laughs> that's what, I don't know. I don't know. That's what. And then I kind of, I don't know. You watch The Flash? No. Oh, man. Is that the TV show? Yeah. No. That has to do with channeling? Uh, I mean, not. Or death theories? Kind of like. Never mind. Never mind. I'm, no, no, I'm sorry, getting off. Sorry, I'm getting sorry. off topic. No, here. no, 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 no. It's fine. It's fine. Okay. But no, just like, in a sense, yes, because someone from a different universe is trying to contact you. I mean, the whole point of the Flash too. It's kind of like having these multi-universe, and people kind of like their roles are kind of switched. Some people have power. Some people don't. You know, it's kind of like, like different Earths basically. And on one earth, you could probably, you like this really popular scientist or whatnot. And in another earth, you're kind of like the fastest man on earth alive or whatnot. So, yeah. I don't know. You know what's crazy is that I heard, I heard, I don't know if this is actually true, but I heard that's consistent with modern physics. <gasps> but it's probably just something to do with the way the math was <laughs> that hmm. people are interpreting it as multiple universes. But yeah, I think it is. I'm not a physicist. Mm -hmm. I am a self-proclaimed (laughs) quasi-physicist. But I'm not a physicist, so I don't know if that's actually real or fake. But some people believe that there's uh, evidence to support that idea. Mm. Um, I'm going to look into that. Because I haven't, I just... Study physics. (laughs) Oh, no, you already went to the cognitive science side, though. I mean, there's different emphasis of cogsci. There's neuro, neuroscience, and then you have, like, the regular BA, and then you have computational. Computational, physics. Yeah. But I'm not going to even... Ah! So... What's that sound? <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? So real physics doesn't really... I don't think it really uh, studies, like, what people are thinking. It's just supposed to be about what is, until people figure out the brain, in which case we will probably find out that what is... And what people were thinking are the same thing. Mm-hmm. Um, the brain is a system. <laughs> oh I think. But um, it, it, so. My, my professor. Yeah, I, I don't think that um, through cognitive science you will learn about fundamental theories of physics, but I could be wrong. It's a new program. The grass is, you know, growing. The flowers are eventually going to be blooming. Not now because it's winter, I think. <laughs> I don't know the seasons. 
But yeah, um, Wait, that's one of that's one of the things that I find attractive about physics too is these weird theories and figuring out how do you, how do people actually come to these conclusions? Mm-hmm. Because just because they're similar to a conspiracy theory does not mean they took the same route to get to that conclusion. Mm-hmm. Um, but the physics way is generally solid. So that's what's interesting is like, wow, people are saying crazy stuff, Mm -hmm. but yet they're the same people who are usually pretty solid. Mm -hmm. So it would be nice to be able to go through that, those steps, but then you got to devote years of your life and maybe it's not worth it. Just wait for Michio Kaku to explain it or like (laughs) Neil deGrasse Tyson, a black person, Neil deGrasse Tyson. (laughs) But what do you think though about, you know, after you die, what do you think happens? I'm curious. I mean, I don't want to depress you. No, just, I want to hear it. All right. Get to me. This is what I think, all right? Just bear with me. Um, let me just get comfortable <laughs> in this seat real quick. I think that uh, you have your senses, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, your experience, I think, anything you do, is just some computation of your senses. And I think... Like, processing information counts as a sense. You could say that that's also. But either way, I think at our base level, our experiences are data processing. So it's like a sensor processor situation. Mm -hmm. And I think that dying is basically, it's basically the situation where um, the data processing stops and it cannot be rebooted. So I think it's just the lack of being able to have an experience. Mm. Yeah, I think that's what death is. But I think th- that being said, you get stabbed in your throat or something. That's the difference between dying and death. It's like you might be able to data process for a while yeah, before it cool. stops. <laughs> like there's got to be something that doesn't allow it to continue and then doesn't al- like permanently doesn't allow it to continue. And uh, it seems like blood flow is one of those things. So you lose enough blood and it'll stop. But then if you can somehow get it going again, then you're, you haven't died. Mm-hmm. So it's really the, the time when um, it's not possible to start back up. But another thing is decomposition. So like you could think of it like you can turn off a computer and turn it back on and as long as everything is you know, the wiring is still wherever it's supposed to fucking be. Mm-hmm. You should expect it to turn on, right? I expect this device to turn on. If it doesn't, I'm a little bit upset. But if I turn it off and then smash it with the hammer, I don't expect it to turn on. Why? Because the thing itself, you know, isn't even structurally intact anymore. Mm-hmm. And that's certainly possible with your body. So that's another way that you can kind of not be able to data process in a way that's irreversible is you can just damage the goods to such an extent that it's like, Oh yeah, you can't put Humpty Dumpty back together again. That nigga's dead. (laughs) (laughs) So, so so what happens is nothing basically, Really? (laughs) but it stays nothing. (laughs) It's not like a momentary nothing. It's just like, Oh yeah, that's it. It's just nothing. Mm. But, uh, Having an experience, I think, might be unique. Um, Like, I don't think this is too controversial or anything, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, I don't think this chair has consciousness. (laughs) 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 I I think it's possible to arrange atoms so that they don't perceive anything or data process. Now, well, arguably data processing, I mean, there's forces, right? The chair needs to be able to withstand my weight on it. So there's got to be some communication, arguably, that's data processing between the... But, like, it's not thinking. This chair is probably not fucking thinking right now. Mm-hmm. That's you, basically, when you're dead. <laughs> like every other piece of matter in the universe, just minus the data processing, hence minus the experience. But that could all be bullshit. I don't know. Hmm. I ain't died yet. This was the last time I checked. <laughs> wow. So you really think that's... Listen, I said I didn't want to depress you, right? I mean, I'm not depressed. I'm just like, my man, like, that's all. Like, you haven't thought... Hold up. Like... No, hold up. Now, time out. Uh-oh. Stop. Uh-oh. What? What about life, though? That says nothing about life. I mean, yeah, you could say, oh, man, the afterlife, there ain't nothing like that. It sucks. Well... But what about right now, though? 
<laughs> I am dead. I'm having an experience right now, though. So why focus on when I'm not having an experience? You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Or how sad it might be if I stop having an experience. Meanwhile, I'm having one right now. Mm-hmm. Let's celebrate. You know what I mean? It's still going on. We're still in this bitch. It's since 94. I'm still here. <laughs> and plus, I ain't going to be alive forever. You know what I'm saying? No matter what happens, certainly I'm going to die. Mm-hmm. So that being said, more the reason to be fucking happy while you're alive, if you can be. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So anyhow, what is a good life to you besides kids? We already covered that. <laughs> If you're if you're 99 years old, looking back, oh yes, I'm 99. <laughs> this was my life. What type of elements would you look for to determine whether or not it was a good life mm-hmm. to you? Um, I think one thing would be just like my impact on others. Mm. You know, just like what grain I guess of seed that I leave them with you know did I um I don't know encourage them to kind of like not encourage them let's just say maybe I kind of like stop them from you know like harming themselves or something like that or maybe I'm I guess encourage them to look um to just live their life or just to find you know I don't know, find something. Wait, can I encourage you to not cover that? Oh, I, sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, live your life. Well, yeah, I think that's one thing, just seeing the impact that I have over others. I think that's the most important thing to me. And then the second would probably be um, just how much I've done in a sense like traveling you know just experiencing like different cultures and you know different ways of life how people like communicate with each other or just I don't know just what they do on a day-to-day basis and whatnot and yeah I don't know it's just what I don't want is you know how typically people are like okay you go to school from K through 12 go to college and then after college you work at this job for like until you're like probably like 56 or 60, you retire, and then like that's it. Like I don't want to be that person at all. I don't. I don't see myself, you know. And me just when I travel, it allows me to see like how people don't worry about the same shit we do in America. Mm. You know, mm. like I feel like they're like. Speaking from my experience right now and then comparing to what they, I feel like they're actually living in a sense. Where? Let's say, okay, I'm just going to start. I'm going to say Belize. I'm going to say Belize. Like, my family, I feel like even though they don't have it all, really, they have a sense of, like, I don't know, like, family is, and in community, it's a lot different. Because out here, like, you have neighbors and stuff. Sometimes you don't even talk to them. It's well, like I'm you say domi. hi. I'm a domi, so you know what I'm saying. <laughs> I see my neighbors every dinner. Oh but, God. yeah, a regular person, yeah, I see what you mean. Yeah. Apartment living, for sure. Mm-hmm. Even dorm living. Mm. Not so much? No. Okay. I mean, like, back home in L.A. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, yeah, you yeah. say LA. hi. Oh, you yeah. You know, you say hi or whatnot, but it's not like... Well, it depends on where you live in LA. Yeah, that's true. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 oh yeah, that's that's definitely true. But yeah, like when my grandma passed away, you know, the whole community came out and like celebrated her life. You know, no one kind of like looked down or no one was really like of course people were crying, but not for long. Everyone was kind of like, you know, you know, passing the mic around, kind of like expressing like, you know, um how influential she was to them and you know how she just had so much kindness, you know, how she put people you know, first and whatnot. Like, she's just really a selfless person, you know? And, uh, yeah, like, they don't really, they don't really stress out, like, the same stuff we do. Like, they wake up in the morning, they bathe in the sea. Like, my cousins have lived right in front of the sea. It's, like, clear. You know, you can see the fish and, like, crabs. You know, they have, like, a little, uh, like, a border there where kids typically just go on top of it and they kind of, like, 
pick like different fish or just like you know whatever's gonna be for dinner that like that's wow. kind of like their life you know and yeah and it's like everyone are is kind of like respective of each other it's like okay make sure you say like good evening grandma or just stuff like that like even though you're just passive by make sure you kind of acknowledge everyone mm-hmm. you know what i mean and then it's like okay well if i'm cooking someone i know that I can like if my um neighbor like if i notice like they're not outside fishing or whatnot, maybe i should offer some to them yeah. you know and, like they kind of have that kind of like kindness towards everyone and then they kind of i mean i feel like everyone just really looks out for each other yeah you know it's not it's like a sense of, like I said, they have, their sense of community is a lot different f- of, like, what I'm used to. And, um, yeah, like, let's see, what else? Uh, well, before you go on, I think it's worth saying that the sense of community is, um, it also, like, so I think based on my experience, um, seeing people go through, like, programs where they were really trying to change their way of thinking they were like they had positive patterns in their lives like addiction is a big one but Mm -hmm. they wanted to change their way of thinking um criminal behavior is another big one it's that like the solution to a lot of those problems is community Mm -hmm. and the lack of and that's the cost of having a lack of community Mm -hmm. is that when people feel like they're stuck outside of the normal world or they're not really accepted, then you get all these other problems, which all seem to, I mean, it's crazy the range of problems that all have the same solutions, Mm -hmm. which is like more reflection, more community, you know, basic kindness. Mm -hmm. Uh, And it's hard to see what the use of it is if you're in a place like a dense city and everything's go, go, go. Mm -hmm. Because it seems like, you know, all that shit's bullshit. You know what I mean? It's just slowing down production. Mm. But the reality is that's what's producing on some psychological level, on some like huge sociological, psychological level, um, a lot of the behaviors that people consider antisocial. It's like, well, this comes with that. Right. And then like you were saying, the ability to bathe in the ocean amongst a community, grab fresh fish out of, you know, provide your own food, have right. a sense of like self-reliance, mm-hmm. respect, um, there's a long-term mental health benefit to, to that community right. that's maybe not as obvious in a dense city. Mm-hmm. It's true, true. And let's see, another thing, too, it's, like, knowing oneself, too. Like, I want to be able to say, like, hmm, that I truly know who I am as a person, you know, without, you know, uh, like, what society kind of, like, molded me into, or not just... <laughs> things you know what I mean just like oh I'm supposed to be this certain way yeah you know what I mean just kind of like <laughs> you know I don't know why are you laughing what's funny I mean yeah I guess that is one way of phrasing it is the opposite of knowing yourself is being the person that society has molded you yeah. into like what you've been conditioned to think or yeah. believe you know what I mean mm-hmm. and I don't know it's like I don't know I don't I feel like right now I don't truly really know myself Mm. You know, I'm on. I'm still on this journey. You know, like I had this professor. Um, I took like a seminar, and we kind of had like conversations about just like self, like actualization, and just like our, you know, just, just, and just like introspection, just a lot of things that you know we talked about in that class. And she told us like on some real shit. She was like, you know, I didn't know myself till I was like 73. Mm. I was just like, wow, you know. Cause it take it took it took her a while to kind of like deep you know do a lot of deep soul searching and kind of like pull away from you know everyone and kind of figure out you know you know face herself and see you know what she likes what she don't like you know Cause yeah. a lot of things we don't really know why that why we believe certain things like for instance let's say um, I don't know. I mean, going back to, like, that video I yeah. sent you. <laughs> yeah. Wait, so please explain the video verbally <laughs> if you can. <laughs> oh, gosh. Okay, so, yeah, so apparently, I guess, I think he's Asian. Okay, that's fair, I think, to think, say that he's Asian. 
You think so? I mean, I hope I'm not, you know, offending anyone, but he appears to be Asian to me. But anyway, um, yeah, so it seems as though like they were putting like a perm in his hair and they kind of had like, I don't know, kind of like these little flexy things to kind of like manipulate the texture to yeah. and make it to like a curl, mm-hmm. you know, and it kind of looked like, like I was telling you, it looked like Bantu knots in a yeah. sense. <laughs> and then how they kind of like unraveled it and then they kind of picked it. Right. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just picturing this right now. And it's, just, it's great. Yeah. So the but, Asian person goes to a barber shop yeah. and requests a high top fade, basically. That's and, a high top. And they're yeah. able to, I don't even know if it, well, high top. And they were able to transform his straight hair into hair that resembled African hair. Yeah. Yeah. And you were disturbed by this, as I expected. I mean, it's not like I was disturbed. I was shocked. <laughs> I'm like, they literally turned this Asian man to a black guy. Like, I had to, like, pause and, like, really zoom in. I'm just like, whose man's is this? Like, he did, he just transformed to someone. <laughs> but to be but, to be the you know devil's advocate, what it's just the hairstyle, mm-hmm. right? What's the problem with that? Some Asian guy having a quote unquote black hairstyle. Mm-hmm. Do you have any uh, rebuttal to that? Rebuttal. I mean, at first I was like thinking about like, I mean a lot of you know thoughts were running through my head. But, like, one of them that I can remember, I was saying, like, okay, like, you know, they kind of want our culture, mm. but not our struggle. I was just like, look at that. And then I was thinking, and I was just like, you know what? Like, as I was, like, you know, just the fact that, like, it was a perm and it made me think. I'm like, you know, you know, being a black woman, like, when I was younger, I went through that. My mom yeah. was kind of like, oh, like. I can't really manage your hair or whatnot. I don't know what to do, so I'm gonna put a permanent to make it manageable. Yeah. So it made I, you know, it made me think of that. I was just like, you know, and people still to this still still to this day, you know, put perms in their head because either they're too lazy to do it, or it's kind of like, you know, they feel like they're conditioned, like they're conditioned to into believing that that's the only way society is gonna accept them. You know, especially like. I don't know, in this time now, like, our hairstyles, like, our natural hair and, like, curls and stuff like that is not really acceptable in the workplace. I mean, in the military, they right. barely just accept it, you know, people to wear their hair, like, with dreads and stuff like that. Yeah. You know? So, you know, constantly hearing... Oh, here I go again. Constantly hearing the... <laughs> the <laughs> like, society tell you, like, this isn't deemed, like, appropriate, you know? So it makes you think, like, okay, well, my hair's not good enough. Yeah. Let me just put a perm, you know. I'm looking at it from that standpoint because, you know, other people can say, like, oh, okay, like, in both situations you have a choice. Mm. But at the same time. You don't get the, to choose the consequences, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Especially when it comes to things like working. That I feel like that's the heaviest uh, um, punishment mm-hmm. is to say, the way your hair is is just it's not even good enough to go to work. Right. <laughs> like what? You can't even earn a dime with that hair. Like, but it's what grows out of my head. Exactly. <laughs> then cut it. <laughs> <laughs> so ridiculous. So cut ridiculous. it off or permit. Those are your so options. Ridiculous. Burn the fuck out of it or just cut the fuck out of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's pretty fucked up. But that's that I feel like that is because there's a lot of other things that are more like preference based, like, oh, you might not get a date, mm-hmm. but you can say, fuck that, I don't need a date. <laughs> you know what I mean? With 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 work, mm-hmm. you can't do that. Like nobody's gonna nobody doesn't matter if I have the skills. Nobody's gonna hire. All right, that's fucked up. Right. That's crazy, and it's not any harm. I know some white people get a little spooked, but what's this? What's there to be afraid of? Somebody walking in with an afro or whatnot, right? You know, you know, it has a lot to do with like stereotypes and stuff, and just like the meaning behind. I mean, like with the afro, you know, as soon as someone see, <laughs> they're just like, "Oh boy, like something's going on." Right. Ice Cube, we got Ice Cube over here. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a fucking public enemy us, <laughs> 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 or whatever. <laughs> 
I can't. Uh, yeah, but I, I agree that the disturbing piece is um, that there isn't, I feel like there isn't awareness what other people, like the cost that other people pay for it. Mm-hmm. However, in a weird switch of events, <laughs> I think that it could bring awareness. Mm-hmm. So I think it could be cool if, um, if, it were, uh, if it were a statement that were made by people who were not black as a form of a protest mm. um, in support of black hair. Mm-hmm. So it could turn out that, you know... Like appreciating one's culture in a sense, kind of... Is that appreciating it and also make normalizing it. Mm. So um, it could be that, you know, black person has cornrows, they're fired. <laughs> White person has cornrows. It's cute. And what they could do is say, listen, white people gather around. <laughs> wear, <laughs> wear cornrows tomorrow. Mm-hmm. And then it'd be a protest to say, hey, this is madness. It's just a hairstyle. Eh, in a sense. But that's not the case right now. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was going to say, I'm like, <laughs> if you, st- if you <laughs> No, no, no. <laughs> right saying. now, there's no organization at all. It yeah. has nothing to do with the protest. It's not reducing the fear of any particular hairstyle. Mm-hmm. It's just... Uh, uh, people wearing hairstyles without the awareness of like the fact that other people are getting punished for it. Right. But uh, but it could be. I I think that we shouldn't be so quick to uh, <laughs> to get angry mm-hmm. <laughs> because I I, I could see you at least one solution. Well, that's one of many that I've cooked up. But <laughs> something that could be used to the advantage of the people who are being you know discriminated against mm-hmm. rather than just what I feel like a lot of people feel is we're being fucking trolled right now. Mm. But it could be, well, one, maybe people don't know um, that other people feel angry that they're doing things that, you know, black people can't do. Mm-hmm. Or, and two, maybe uh, they're potential allies for the future. Uh, mm. These are people who genuinely appreciate um, this element of black culture, and it's possible to use that to uh, normalize something which is now kind of being used to marginalize yeah. uh, black people. Yeah, I don't know. But I'm not an activist. <laughs> I just... So I usually don't uh, express these things, but uh, yeah. I'll tell you since you brought it up and you sent me the video. Like, I hear, you know, what you're saying, like how that can be used as a way to kind of, like, normalize and, like, I guess be in a way, you know, view it as, like, a protest or whatnot. But I feel like some people, like, let's just say, like, Kim K, yeah. for instance, like, her wearing, like, braids or whatnot, and then her calling, like, boxer braids. Like, what the fuck is boxer braids? I don't know. So I, I, don't I think that's understand. when things kind of get, you know, sticky, really weird. Because, like, you are kind of, I don't know, it sparks a conversation with, like, cultural appropriation. Because, like, I feel like for me, it's, like, when someone's kind of, like, marketing or kind of, like, tr- you know, trying to get, like, I guess profiting off of, like, one's culture but not really, uh, and then kind of, like, reshaping it and renaming it, calling it something different, you know? Yeah. So I think that's when, you know, problems start. But... I agree. I think that's more dangerous than the potential Asian guy. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, I think, yeah, I, that's why I had to, like, pull back for a second. I was like, you know what? Like, it's it's not on the same, like, level. It's just, just him, you know. <laughs> just trying to get a high top. <laughs> <laughs> and share it with his friends online. Right. And it wasn't a bad high top, you know. Maybe it was the barber's idea. <laughs> just... But I'm just amazed. I, I didn't even know. Like, I've seen, you know, people put perms and it's like afro and stuff like that. But just like, that was like my actual, like, first time seeing someone get a <laughs> haircut like yeah, that. Yeah, that was, you got to admit, it was pretty cool, It too. was. That, that was he, shocked. When he picked it out, I didn't expect that. I mm-hmm. thought the whole thing would be the Bantu knot things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's what I thought. Like, yeah, same. I thought it was going to be like, and then when he picked it out and then, like, how everything kind of pulled through, I was kind of like. Shouts out to the barber. I think the barber was also Asian, so shouts out to that Asian barber <laughs> for knowing how to cut black hair properly. Or black Asian, hair. well. Oh, there you go. Uh, 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 it's, we're, on, 
What is it? What hair is it? Whose hair is this? Maybe it was a. Maybe he got a weave from a black not person. Not a weave. Then, now he can he can score him some black honeys now. I don't know. Trump has a weave, right? <gasps> <laughs> is that a black? Is that cultural? For me? <laughs> That's, that's a toupee. Hair. That's a toupee. Whatever yeah. it is, I don't know the difference. They're all wigs. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, I think that's everything. So we're going to wrap it up with uh, the most important question in the universe. The most important ready? question in the universe. I'm ready. Bounce or pounce? Bounce. That's right. The Chef of X podcast. Mmm, delicious. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Thank you. That's everything. (laughs) Oh, that's not everything. That's not. We gotta move on to the sound bite. Here's a quick message from our one and only sponsor, True Facts. True True Facts. Facts. We, we said, said it, it, therefore, therefore it's true. You know what's good? It's the young sheep. I just wanted to give a quick shout out and testimonial to my brothers at True Facts. You know what I'm saying? True Facts is the only online news source that I can trust. They already figured it out, man. They post real sh only. The shit I agree with, you know what I mean? You never gotta worry about checking those sources with True Facts. They got it done. Plus, they got some real niggas and bad bitches working up in that motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, shout out to True Facts. True, true Facts. facts. We, we said, said it, it, therefore it's true. true.